Faith here with your podcast, Welcome Toast. May we have patience with anyone whose two sandwiches are short of a picnic. Listen to our show in small bites or enjoy the whole thing. I got that sunshine in my pocket. Got that good soul in my feet. I feel that hot blood in my body when it drops. It's great to have you joining the party on the Faith Middleton Food Schmooze, inviting you to join us to eat, drink, and be merry. We're going to do old school picnic baskets um, in our, our first part of the show. My treasured food buddies are here. Senior contributors Chris Busberry of Metro Beast Restaurant in Simsbury, Connecticut, and wine broker Alex Province of Hartford, Connecticut. Senior producer Robin Doyan Aiken. Hey, everybody. Hey, Hello. Faith. Okay, let's go old school with the picnic basket. Oh, yeah. Now, you might be using Using some high tech cooler, <laughs> um, Get a but, neon color. but just to kind of go go with me on this. We're going to create a fantasy of the old school picnic basket with the red check lining. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. And Yogi yeah. Bear would take mean, not, yes. n- not not like mine. That actually, it's a cooler style one, and you can actually plug it into the charger port of your car. Oh my gosh! Wow. It has a little fan in there. And, Ooh. Yeah, wow. I got it years ago, and I love taking. It's it an on actual trips. picnic. Basket? It's a cooler. It's uh-huh. a cooler, it's a but cooler. it's a cloth cooler so it's not very heavy and it has a little refrigerator thing in it to take it on the road you just plug it into your charging port of your car and then i got an adapter then you can take that to your hotel room and plug it right into the wall was this before they had ice packs no i think this is after ice packs so why wouldn't you just put ice packs in just so I understand the science of it. That's it, because of the science. I'm high tech. Truckers would love and it. High tech, <laughs> and high right. tech. And you don't have to refreeze the ice packs. <laughs> okay. All right. I see. I see where you're going. So um, it's totally frivolous. See. Yes, Faith. No, totally I, frivolous. But I love but I that love kind it. of thing. I love it. But in our minds, we're thinking of the old fashioned <laughs> wooden weed yeah, yeah, ones, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, the so um, we're going to do. Yeah, let's, I was let's, thinking that too. Let's just do a thing about picnic food and Mm -hmm. let's have picnics whether you do it in the backyard or you do it someplace at a state park or a beach or the lake or Mm -hmm. wherever you want to go let's do a picnic the classic of course for many many people i don't know if this really does come from the south but the classic of course is fried chicken Ooh, my mm-hmm. question cold so, fried chicken uh, what's the important thing about see, it i love taking chicken thighs I pound them a little bit thin. So Why do you do those instead of the breast? I just love the chicken. flavor, and I, do, I, do I love the fact that they stay moist. With bones, though? No, you, no, no, no. Take them out. Take, okay. You buy them that way. Boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Okay. I take them and lay them out on a cutting board with a little plastic wrap on top, and with the back of a saute pan, or if you have a meat tenderizing mallet, whatever, just pound it out so it's a little thinner. And then I take it, and I dip it into buttermilk or milk. And then into a seasoned breadcrumb mix, back in the milk, back in the seasoned breadcrumb mix, and then I pan fry it. And I like it thinner because when you're out in the picnic, it's easier to eat. If you buy the small, they don't get much bigger than a couple inches, right? Yeah, yeah. And they're, oh, they're so yummy. Oh. oh. And then you just take a little sauce to spread on it, and you can eat them with your hands. And it's Now, you're wearing a, a gray flannel suit, like yes, Cary Grant. Yes, <laughs> sure, sure. Now, no. should, we, we don't want to put those in a plastic container, right? Because wouldn't that sagify? I, <laughs> so what I do is when I, when I put them away in the refrigerator, I put them away on a little cookie sheet, and I let them cool open. In that, the fridge? In the fridge, so they're totally cool, and then I pack them in. So the once steam's coming Yeah, so off. once they're totally cooled, then I pack them in a little Tupperware container. Oh, you do? After they're totally refrigerated. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So we would take that with white bread with mayonnaise mm. and then mm. cut chicken, fried chicken into pieces, and then oh. that with iceberg lettuce and oh. tomato makes oh. a fried chicken sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> you cut so, in a triangle. Wait, I'll, You're yeah, killing me. And I'll give you one, too. <laughs> we've, we've taken that fried mm. chicken and chop it into cubes. With the batter still on it. Some of it falls Uh off. And then you mix it with chickpeas and Italian dressing, just regular store-bought Italian dressing, and some Parmesan cheese, and you make this chickpea fried chicken salad. Put some, ch- you could chop up some red peppers or some celery in it too. And no. Oh my God, it's good. Here's Fried where we do. Salad. Here's where we do mm-hmm. the, the bacteria <laughs> alert. Always, yep. if you're talking about a picnic, you have mm-hmm. to do this. So, yep. we were just talking about this before the show. To be sure to tell you that if you have anything with mayo in it, 
you want to be sure that it is in a container with an ice pack. Yep, keep it now, cold. if you take it, it's got to be cool on the way to the event. Mm -hmm. It's got to be cool at your picnic. Mm -hmm. Take it out and you serve it. And if there are leftovers in the container, they must go back into the cooler mm -hmm. with the ice pack again. Keep it safe. And if they, to keep it safe. But if they don't, if the chicken stays out in a bowl of some kind mm -hmm. or in a platter, you have, Chris says, the four, four hour hours, according yep. to the FDA. Yep. Four. But no saving afterwards. That's the only bad part, and I hate wasting food. Mm. Right. Mm. So if there's leftovers, if it sits out for a couple hours like that, you're not supposed to take it and put it back in the refrigerator and reuse it. Okay. So that's so, why I always say keep so it cold, put small portions out. If you're doing a big backyard picnic with lots of people. Oh, keep replenishing. Keep replenishing it. But if it's just two of you, you don't have to worry about it. Just take enough food for two of you or yeah. three of you, whatever. <laughs> oh, right? And so just, hard yeah, to know with And me. then you just take a little portions <laughs> and then you don't have to worry about it. Um, mm. Okay. So already we've covered fried chicken and yep. these fried chicken sandwiches, which Ooh. is the mm -hmm. dreamiest mm -hmm. idea. Chris's mm -hmm. fried chicken salad, which is another incredible mm -hmm. thing. I would do a thermos with a cold soup, like a Vichy Soi or something. Or mm, that's a good one. You know, yeah. thinking like 1970s style, like or a, a or fruit soup. Fruit soup. You could do like soup. a cantaloupe. Ooh. Mm. Or yeah, your gazpacho. Watermelon gazpacho. Or, yes. or even his regular gazpacho. Cantaloupe but we're sticking soup. with the whole Americana. <laughs> I don't know if they uh, had gazpacho you know in like, the 70s. You know what I like to do, too, is I always like bringing pickles. And I'm not just talking about cucumbers. I like bringing little jars of assorted pickles. So I'll have oh. a jar of, like, pickled zucchini. Uh, I have this great recipe well, for you, overnight you, pickled green beans. Because they're so good do, finger food. You do pickled vegetables. Pickled vegetables words. because it's like an antipasti, right? You can just pass the jar around and right yeah. get a little fork in there. Or would you do the, the toothpicks with the like sure, the colorful yes, like stuff totally. on the tips? You know that's what I'm talking about? Yeah, the <laughs> frill picks. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Totally, and that it's not just about <laughs> making it fun, but it's the crunch, it's the vinegar. It cleans your palate if you're going from like the it's chicken food. sandwich to yeah, yeah it's well, fun nibble food. Yeah. This is kind of a crazy idea at this time of year. You don't think of heavy food, mm -hmm. but because Chris mentioned pickled vegetables. Mm -hmm. I thought I would really like, it, despite whatever heat there is, I would really like at my picnic a banh mi sandwich. Oh, sure, with all those pickled oh. vegetables. So yes. a little pate, mm. a little slice of pork. Yeah. So you make a roast at home and just slice it yeah. very thin. A little mm -hmm. slice of pate. You yes. can certainly get, you don't even have to have the loaf pate. You no, can even you get can a creamy, yeah, you know, a liverwurst spread it or on. Or, yep. Yes. Totally works And fine. then the pickled vegetables that yes, Chris is fresh talking cilantro. about. Fresh cilantro. Yes. Oh, and oof. a little squeeze of lime. Yeah, and maybe some sliced jalapenos. Oh, oh heaven. How about that? You know, that with a glass bottle of Coca-Cola. Oh, Icy yeah, you got to go old school. <laughs> yes. Did you just make a soda pairing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. a soda pairing. <laughs> cool. you, know, you know what the other thing I like to do? And this is something I don't know. People don't do as much anymore, I don't think. But I always bring hard-boiled eggs. Yes. But I just bring the hard-boiled eggs. For, for your picnic. For the picnics. And yeah. I leave them in the shell. Yeah. And then we crack them when we're there. You peel them. You can throw the oh, shells in the grass. Fun. It's no big deal. And then you just you can you know put a little salt. You know the I thought we were someone was going to say deviled eggs. You I love deviled, deviled eggs. eggs. It, they're hard to transport. Yeah. But they have mm -hmm. these ice pack things where it, there's a container and there's an ice pack under the deviled yeah, egg dish. Yeah, she showed me that Ooh. online once. And it's, it's real. You, yeah. Then you, you set your deviled it. eggs yeah. On, yeah, on top you, of it, and then the lid goes on top of the, the tray of eggs. And they keep them solid and, the and cold. Oh, and you can put good. that right that's in your fantastic. picnic basket. Really? That's a cool okay. idea. Okay, it's a good invention. I'm thinking of all the napkins that used to come like in that big, long rectangle, that thin sort of... <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask Alex, like, okay, forget food, wine, all so that retro. stuff is, is we know, but what else do you need in your... What's a the blanket. essentials? A blanket. What else do we need? Like a uh, corkscrew. The, oh, yeah. Do you, are you board? with the plastic yeah. glasses? At the beach, we're all about oh, the, yeah, the plastic. Oh, yeah, you have to. Some beaches, they don't allow glass. We don't do mm -hmm. real glass mm -hmm. unless, you know, I mean, if we were doing a picnic on the green mm -hmm. in New Haven or somewhere like then that, we would bring real glasses, but... Mostly, 
I will do plastic wine glasses. The Govinos, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. those are fun. They look like real wine glasses. Yeah. And you can recycle those, like wash yeah. them and reuse them, I should course, say. Don't totally. throw don't throw them out. I like I like the ones where the stem comes time. off the bowl of the glass and then they stack <laughs> nice and neat. You've, you've put seen, them in a drawer. You, you've seen the ones that have you seen the plastic cups that are white and the the black logo on the front says weekend waterford. And you know, nice, <laughs> that's in Waterford Crystal. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so you use them. We sometimes yeah. will take those to the beach. Yeah. You know, somebody gave them as a kind of a joke gift. So you have um, to have watermelon, sliced watermelon. Oh, sure. Do you? Yeah, at your I think yep. so. Yep. Yeah. Some kind it's of wonderful. fruit, either watermelon or cantaloupes, or, right? Some kind of yeah. melon. Oh, you know, most people would bring uh, pie. Pie. Yeah. Ooh. Pie know. is the biggest yeah. one. How about display? You know, how and do you bring how, a little candelabra for on the grass? What do you do? You, or do you <laughs> that's, do that's candles? That's like Tanglewood, or, right? The, some of the displays of Tanglewood are mind blowing on the grass. Yeah, you know, the People more. Go all out. One time I was in Ireland and I came around. I was walking in these cliffs overlooking the water, kind of black rocks and the gorgeous mm. ocean rushing in. I came around a corner and there is a couple, and they had carried in a folding table. Yeah. Flatware, China. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they had glasses, <laughs> and they were having a, the most glorious picnic on the little bit of greenery next to the rocks with mm. the r- ocean crashing right there. Mm. I thought, I don't know who you are, but you must be in love. This must, this is the most <laughs> fabulous thing. I live near Tanglewood, so I go there once or twice a year, and I still don't know how these people did it, but they brought in <laughs> a low coffee table thing. And it was big. There were six people people sitting around it. They had these big poofy pillows they were all sitting on. And it was set so elaborately with fine china and glasses and, like you said, silverware. And what a fun thing. It was, everyone was just commenting on like potted plants. Yeah, yeah, like everything. And you're like, how did they must have like made 10 sofa? Yeah, three three truckloads to get it in and get it out. But it was pretty amazing. Okay. around them were yeah. probably giving them the stink eye, though. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, like, I, I, I put all this effort yeah, into impressing yeah, my yeah. my date here, yeah. and you show up with, with furniture. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and me, I'm sitting there on my blanket. The only, <laughs> I yeah. like the blanket. The, only, the only way I can think of doing that, what you just described, mm-hmm. was to give everyone an assignment to bring in one real thing. One like, piece. You are the beautiful flatware. Yeah, and you're the glass. You are the glassware. Yeah, yeah. You are the plates. But and then somebody's in charge oh, come of on. food. You've, if you've been to Tangle, you see people coming in with wagons, the red flyer wagons. They're pulling these wagons. <laughs> and these wagons are filled with stuff. You're like, wow, are you moving in? <laughs> I, I, I am discovering in this conversation that I have not been picnicking the right way. Well, well, I don't know. know. I don't do that. I, my rule is if I can't carry it in and out in one trip, it doesn't come with me. You know, and then what I care about is that my wine stays cold until <laughs> I drag it to the beach. Priority. Marching down yep. the road. And you'd have a nice rosé? Yeah, mostly yeah. Nice with dry. my Summertime, family. Yeah. That's mostly what we do. We sit on the beach and out comes a chilled rosé. It's nice. pretty, pretty great. Oh. I think we need champagne. cocktails. We can need we champagne. bring can we bring cocktail oh, mixes? You bet. And, so right? I always envision Sean Connery pulling up the champagne when he's in a you know he's having a picnic in in the rowboat, and then he he pulls a string and the champagne comes out of the river. He's like, oh, the perfect temperature. Nice. Would you, <laughs> let's say this picnic is at the beach. Do you folks remember that we had someone on the air who described taking a pineapple and tying a rope to the oh, end? Yeah. Hurling it into the salt water Cuban. ocean. This is what they would do into the ocean, okay. throw it out there, and mm. you know, like you're casting, and then just anchor the rope on sand. Yeah. And it sits out there marinating in, in salt, the salt water. water. Yeah. Okay. Then you pull it after a you know, period of time, yeah. you pull it back in and you start slicing it. And oh, it, it's it, it's salty, sweet. salty, sweet, delicious. Oh, I want to try that. Don't you think? Yeah. We have, huh? to, we have to try it. We have to try that. Food Schmooze Road Trip. Yeah. He could grill it, right? Didn't he grill it? Did grill, he? I think I he did remember. barbecue. Wow, I love that. Idea. barbecue. Oh. Sounds that good. That sounds right. right. Mm. So pie. Pie, mm-hmm. whatever yeah. pie. It's just all fine oh, with me. Oh, blueberry pie, strawberry pie. Yeah, definitely pie. Cookies. Cookies, yeah. Yeah. Those Brownies. Brownies. Brownies, Using cookies. Matt's new pan that has all yeah, the corners. The brownie See? edges. The brownie yeah. edges. The best well, kind. I love that. <laughs> I like brownies you you the, measure what you eat by like the inches, though. So now it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, just three inches for me this time. <laughs> so have we covered it all? Do we have our picnic? Are we I ready? we have a picnic. Are we ready? Certainly, you know, we haven't even mentioned the picnic Bugs where spray. you cook. 
Oh yes, bug spray. <laughs> yeah, just not that. near the food. <laughs> yeah, do well, that before good ones you get now, there. Like citronella yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't mention the one where you cook at the site, but I we're we're that. not even going to call that quite a picnic. It is, of course, mm-hmm. but we call that a cookout. So yeah. um, we were just doing, you know, the pack from home. Yep. Whether it's old we'll school a with a basket. Place to sit. I have a permanent one in the back of my car that nice. I keep there, just in case I should yeah. stumble upon a beautiful cheese. Yep. Yeah. A bottle of wine nice. and uh, a baguette. You cool. know, that's the sometimes like that's the picnic that. right there, right? Oh, it can yeah. be. As, it, I mean, we went elaborate, but it can be as simple as a baguette and some cheese and some fruit, mm-hmm. and that's it. And some you just, cold cuts as well. Yeah, cold cuts, and that's it. And you're sitting there with a pocket knife and a cutting board. Oh, I and love that. It's transforming to just grab that bunch of stuff. Oh, especially a, meet a friend or two, sit down maybe yeah. with just a treasured person and. Yeah. Sit down outside by the water. And I the love grass early and, afternoon. Oh. Do it as a surprise. Have it all ready to go yeah, and or pick put up it in your trunk. friend or whatever. Yeah. And then just, you know, your spouse you and or friend or whatever and go yeah. someplace say, and have a picnic ready. How romantic. Yeah, yeah wonderful. I like that. Okay. I consider myself invited. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <You> permanently <laughs> invited. <laughs> Um, I promise to tell you about the trip to Sicily that I'm leading in October. This is October 4 through 14. Most of the travel writers that I have interviewed, surprisingly, their favorite food, wine, and culture destination, we're talking about Italy now, Sicily. I always think they're going to pick some other region of Italy. It is Sicily, and that's why I'm inviting you to come with me October 4 through 14 on my next personally curated Faith Middleton Food Schmooze experience. It is our tour of what I think of now as extraordinary Sicily. We're going to stay at Top Flight Hotels, a beautiful spa included, unforgettable meals prepared by a fleet of Italy's most talented chefs, Wineries are going to pull out their best for us. They always do that. We're going to have cheese and chocolate tastings. This is all lined up. Visit beautiful ancient ruins, some of the best ancient ruins in the world, museums, a remarkable garden. We're going to shop in the markets. We're going to take a cooking class. I hope you'll join me for an unparalleled travel experience. Our Faith Middleton Food Schmooze Tour of Extraordinary Sicily. Go to foodschmooze.org slash Italy. All right, coming up, we have how about picking your own strawberries that is really fun and talk about fresh right off the vine. Our strawberry rum daiquiris and we've also got a strawberry whipped cream layer cake. More mouth-watering conversation and fun head on the Faith Middleton Food Schmooze. I hope you will make a charitable contribution to Feed the Hungry. There are many. We are online now at foodschmooze.org. And, of course, we'll be right back. Fill the basket to the brim. Wait until the lights are dim. Set the stage and let the music flow. Having a party. Cornbread said, now that's all right. Bean. Meet me on the corner tomorrow night. I'll be ready. I'll be ready tomorrow night. I'll be ready. I'll be ready tomorrow night. I'll be ready. I'll be ready tomorrow night. That's what Bean said to Cornbread. Hey, yes, they did. We have a free podcast for you. If you've never done podcasts before, a lot of people do this. They think, I want to listen to the Food Schmooze on my schedule anytime I want. We'll send you on your any device you want, your phone, your, your iPad, Android device, whatever it is. It's a copy of the show. It's free. You just sign up for it once, and it just comes to you. So the site is foodschmooze.org. 
And you can join the literally thousands now of people who are doing it this way, including our Christopher oh, Prosperity. Yeah. It's the only way I listen. <laughs> <laughs> so we're always online at foodschmooze.org. Of course, I am with my treasured food buddies, Chris Prosperity, chef and co-owner of Metro Beast Restaurant in Simsbury, Connecticut, to die for food because he makes mm. it just as he does for us here and then we just swoon over it. Wine broker Alex Province of Hartford who has just the best picks in wine and um, you're just so good at it. And Mark Raymond, also a wine broker, he is so good at it. We feel like we have the the kingpins of wine selection. <laughs> and Robin Doyen Aiken is our senior producer and is also a contributor on the show Regarding the wine, I wanted to add that if you are a wine broker or a distributor and you would like us to taste wines that you think would qualify for this show, please just send them along to us. Contact us at foodschmooze.org and we'll take care of that and arrange to have your wine submitted. We taste them, we test them. And we, you know, we say, yes, this is good for the show. We just did one this morning, as a matter of fact. Okay, let's go to strawberries, because for some people, it is strawberry season. Is some are season. early, some are late, some are on My time. Favorite. What are your best ways? What can we do with fresh strawberries? I know how I start. Pick your own, right? So I pick That's a day, yeah. and you go out and you pick a couple of flats, because, you know, you know you're going to eat at least a half of one on the way home. Do you do pick your own for the flavor of the strawberries that are growing or just because it's a yeah, Part of the experience, right? More part than the, the flavor? More than the flavor. Because the same place as I go pick your own, you can go right up to the little stand there and buy a flat already picked for you. Mm -hmm. I think it's just part of the experience and you can pick the bigger Pretend one. like you picked them? Yeah, pretend, <laughs> you could pretend like you pick them. But anyway, I always get two. And then... Like I said, you got to eat some on the way home. And then when as soon as I get home, this is the <laughs> first thing I do with the first strawberries. You ready? I grab the blender. Mm -hmm. okay. I cut the strawberries in half, take the cocktail. top off it. <laughs> yep. And then I, yeah, and I chop them up. I sugar them a little bit, let them sit while I get the rum. And Ooh. I make more, um, I make strawberry um, Daiquiri? daiquiris. <gasps> yeah. And that's like some the, ice. Yeah. You put ice in the blender. Yeah. Right. And then the strawberries. Wow, and then I just, daiquiri. yeah. And then I just do some fr uh -huh. a splash of rum and that's it. It doesn't need anything Low else. Low cream? You don't have to mm. because the strawberries cream. are so awesome. <laughs> Well, a little fat. <laughs> well, so yeah, so that's how I start. Okay. All right. Now, do you ever make a strawberry soup? Is yeah, I've made strawberry that, soups yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. But I, what would I, you, you know put what? in a strawberry soup? I should have looked it up. But what, Very what little, would you put? Right? Yeah. Well, I'm wondering, mm -hmm. you know what is striking me? How would strawberry soup be? With, Of course, they're going to go in the blender. Mm -hmm. With a little port. Oh, yeah. How I do you like, think that would be? I like a little sour It'll cream, too, to make it yeah. creamy. Mm -hmm. You like it chunky? No, no, jammy, I mean. I think with the little port in there and the strawberries, mm -hmm. that just strikes mm -hmm. me already. And a little spice? Jammy. Does it need a little spice? Good, yeah, white like pepper. So. What would yeah, your spice be, Alex? Yeah, I'm thinking a um, little cayenne or something, Ooh, you know, that sort of just, you, uh -huh. you don't taste it, but you just get the buzz from it a little uh, bit. I was wondering if cinnamon would work. Ooh, would that's good, work? that's good. Would it fresh, work? Yeah, fresh I, mint. I'm making this up. Yeah, oh, no, all fresh the, mint. Fresh mint yeah. goes well with strawberries, mm. yeah. Okay, so you yep. could make a soup, and there's certainly online a million recipes. Of course. Do you we use might a rhubarb have looked for them acid, up for maybe? Yes, yeah, yeah. Maybe, uh, see, a little rhubarb for the acid, you know, to give it a little oh, cook know, down, sourness. Cook, yeah, cook the rhubarb down a little bit and put it in the blender with it. What do they put strawberries with in pie? What's the other fruit they would mix? You know, they'll often do peach and blueberry. Oh, yeah, strawberry and rhubarb. rhubarb yeah. yeah, strawberry, strawberry and, and rhubarb, rhubarb is number okay. one because they grow. The, the old saying, what grows together goes together. I think port with those two oh, yeah. would really be good. You know, and that's a great soup, strawberry rhubarb. That's a great idea. In Spain, my grandfather used to take red wine and strawberries and puts them together, let, lets it macerate mm -hmm. together with sugar. And so that's a, so the port, I think, is probably even better than red wine. Okay. It has a little yeah. more like. Body or, to or it. sparkling wine could go oh, in. Oh, that's good. You can yeah. actually, Close. if you want to get strawberry little, sangria. Yeah, if you want to get crazy, you make can actually make soup. Soup. you can make <laughs> strawberry wine. Right? Oh. You can actually take the strawberries, put them in a. I feel like a, that's a Van Morrison song. Like ferment them. <laughs> yeah, and ferment strawberry them and make strawberry wine. wine. Yeah. yeah. Well, my mom does strawberry and raspberry wine. Where you just take it and ferment it. Mm. And, and so, so the quick way to do that, because I've done it mm -hmm. with oranges where I make mm -hmm. around um, the holidays, Christmas yep. holidays in my tradition, 
uh, I would get uh, an inexpensive white Bordeaux and then pour into it a different container fruit, like um, oranges would be my yeah. number one thing, and then let it sit there for a couple of weeks and then pull the fruit out, strain it, and there you go. I've got a very dry, beautiful orange wine. Mm-hmm. Would you add a little vodka to it or something? Just I to... didn't, but you know, this when he was talking, when Chris was talking, Alex, I thought to myself, this is the exact same way to flavor like a spirit. Your your yeah, yeah. vodka or whatever you might want to flavor. Yeah. Speaking well. of growing together, what do dandelions taste like? Cuz I know you can make dandelion wine. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, we eat them every year. That's really? an Austrian tradition. Are they tradition. savory or sweet? Uh, no, they're bitter. There's they're a bitter. bitter green. Yeah, you just do the green, not the flower. a salad. Yeah, you do it as a salad. Yeah, okay. every spring. So I throw in some dandelions into your strawberry soup. Okay. Yeah, you could. It gives now, a nice little. Is there sing. anything <laughs> on the soup that should should be dolloped on? I mean, there should there be sour creme cream, yeah. sour creme fraiche. See, I like putting cr- a sour cream yogurt, or creme fraiche in the soup. whipped cream. I like you, pureeing it with a little sour cream or creme fraiche, so uh-huh. it's a creamy consistency. Goes to pink. Yeah, it goes to pink, and it has, and it takes any of the sharp edges off the soup. So if you take whatever soup recipe you want, put it in the blender, make it with a cinnamon or mint or whatever you have, and then right at the last minute, take a couple dollops of sour cream and just pulse it in there, and that just adds this depth of flavor. And to would it. you do that one dollop at a time to see how it's affecting sure. the flavor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. so we've got a soup mm-hmm. going. <laughs> We're all set with that. Pure, um, would you would you strain it? To make it sort of silky and elegant? Uh, see, I don't. No. I just like it rustic. Right. Mm. But you can. Yeah, if you want it more refined. I feel like for a dinner you're... party through yeah, a yeah, you know, yeah. fancy chinois or whatever yeah. would make it so when, smooth. When I was growing up, my favorite birthday cake that my mother made oh. was uh, a yellow cake. And then she would cut the layer when it came out of the mm-hmm. oven. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wish I could tell you I remembered whether it was a box cake mix or it was from scratch. Uh, she would do both, but she loved to invent things mm. in recipes. And so she would then slice the cake in half horizontally so that that now became two layers. She would beat up uh, freshly whipped cream. Oh. She would cut the strawberries in half. And in that first layer, she would cover the entire top with whipped cream. And then she would put the uh, end to end the strawberries across the whole surface in the whipped cream. Then she'd take the top layer and put it on top. Then she would take the top of the cake, put whipped cream on the top, and then do the same thing with the strawberries. And then she would whipped cream the sides of the cake mm. and press the strawberries into the sides. And so what that was was a strawberry whipped cream cake. Sounds yummy. Everything real. And so phenomenal because when you cut, when the fork went through it, the strawberries, yeah. maybe from the sugar and the whipped cream, would somehow juice into the mm-hmm. cake. And it would, so it would be wet with strawberry juice plus the whipped cream. To this day, they're just the best cake I've ever had, I think. You know, that is my favorite dessert. A strawberry cake, yeah. like a whipped cream strawberry yeah. cake with the juices. That is my favorite dessert. It is. I will order it. Where any strawberry dessert like that? Do you ever re- find that? I've never found that. It's in the really restaurant. hard. People, it's no one does. Oh, we stuff do like one. That anymore. We do one with uh, uh, angel food cake. That's good too. Oh, that's so. And good. again, it's a quick, easy one. You can either buy it or make your angel food cake ahead of time, right? And you just take a. It, you don't even have no decorating or anything. Just take a slice of it plain, put it on a plate. Add the whipped cream, and then the macerated strawberries go on top, and then a little bit more whipped all cream. All soaks and in. And it all soaks in, and oh. it is just oh. heaven. So, and, and pound cake works good, too. You can oh, buy the pound too. cake. Just take a slice of that, put it on a plate, and then the macerated strawberries. Well, you got to take your strawberries, cut them in half, and then just lightly sugar a pinch of salt and let them sit for about an hour. How would all of you describe the difference between that cake and strawberry traditional strawberry shortcake with biscuits? So, so your so, mom's cake is going to be soft and spongy and yeah. gentle and and whereas you know dreamy. I think of, yeah, mm-hmm. I think of the, you know the shortbread is t- cr- cr- yeah. well, but don't get me wrong, I, I love chew it strawberry more. shortcake. Oh, I do yeah, too. Right, it's yeah. just a totally oh, yeah. different thing. It's got more toothsomeness to yeah. it, right? It doesn't it's heartier. Yeah, it's heartier. But there's something about when you have it like on a soft cake like that, it all mm. just melts. To, oh. You don't even have to chew; mm. it just sort of yeah. dissolves in your mouth. <gasps> I think that's oh. what heaven is like. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. I do too. Yeah. In the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you know there's a cafeteria and, there. And you know what? It it's all is, you can eat. And it's the best cafeteria. <laughs> it's one of the last things that we have that mm-hmm. I don't care what you say. You can get strawberries all year round. But when you get them and they're growing around here and you get them yeah. at the peak of ripeness or pick your own or whatever, yeah. you buy them in the flat or whatever, They there's no comparison. Mm -hmm. It's like two totally different things. We're going to get to this later as we get deeper into July and really get into August when peaches come out. Because I just want to mention, my mother made the exact same cake for me when fresh peaches were around. Perfect. Yeah, so, I love your mom. I know, I know. She was smart. <laughs> yeah, she knew she was. Yeah, I don't know if she read it somewhere. I never did get to talk to her about it, but so that's uh, what she did: fresh peaches, and excellent with canned peaches, by the way, because the whipped cream, oh, the yeah. fresh and whipped cream, juice that comes out makes of up for the fact that it's canned peaches. I mm-hmm. love strawberry ice cream too. You yeah. do. Yeah. Do you make it yourself? Or, I was so thinking that our, uh, our friend uh, at Arethusa could maybe make it for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I'm that's sure on the menu I'm right I'm sure now. they already do. But do you remember when I was a kid, when you bought strawberry ice cream, I would go to this little pharmacy in Hartford where they oh. had a, a bar with stools, not too many, like four stools, and I'd order the strawberry ice cream because I went through that streak. And what was different about what you see today is that it was packed with strawberries, mm-hmm. whole strawberries. You know that you that, could actually see a strawberry inside. Oh, you would bite cream. into it. Yeah. And you'd have a whole, whole strawberry, strawberry in you. not these little slivers or no, pieces. No, no. Or, or yeah. in the strawberry ice cream now, there's it's no pureed. strawberries. Yeah, it's you know, like a strawberry milkshake where you actually clog the straw with oh, the yeah. strawberry bits. <laughs> That's the best sip. <laughs> we should do. You have we, to flip it over, and get it from the other side. <laughs> you know, we have to promise everyone. Let's all, as you're listening, we're asking you to get in on this with us too. We should all promise ourselves to do these things we're talking about. right Right now, let's make those cakes with the strawberries. Yeah. Let's make that milkshake. You know what would be fun is to make a cake and then put it and bring it to like a, a neighbor or a friend, just out of the blue, bring them an old-fashioned strawberry cake. Yeah. Imagine like how good that would make you feel. Someone just moves into the neighborhood. Think of that. Oh, that's oh, a welcome, Wouldn't they just right? be your oh, best friend that. forever? Yeah. Um, okay, so, you know, I was thinking, Alex, about you liking strawberry ice cream mm. and how you could buy strawberry ice cream and then hack it. Let it get soft. Oh. Then take your whole macerated strawberries and, and smash in. it all in and yeah. then stir it up, put it back in a, con- a container, freeze it again, and then you'd have that experience mm-hmm. of, you know, with you a little, a good thing better. pour a little chambord yeah. or something Ooh. over the top, mm. whatever you might like. So I can almost stop when I like my ice cream sort of soft. So I take good ice cream and then I'll, I'll sort of do what you do and mix it in a bowl with a spoon and then add, you know, M&Ms or something to good vanilla ice cream. I, I call that a milkshake with a spoon. I love it. <laughs> I used you to can do eat that more. Too. <laughs> I do too. Um, all right. I'm having a ball as I always do with my buddies and we have more fun. We'll just surprise you with the next segment. We have more fun coming your way. Isn't this the best season? Stay with us. So good, so good, I got you, I feel nice, like sugar and spice now, I feel nice, like sugar and spice now. is the food schmooze party offering the richness of life 
and coming to you in Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New York, including Westchester County, the East End of Long Island, of course, the Hamptons. The senior producer who joins us on the show is Robin Doyon Aiken. To hear the show on WNPR, it airs Thursdays at 3 and Saturdays at noon, Adventure Day. Podcasts and our curated recommendations are always online at foodschmooze.org. I'm with my treasured food buddies, Chris Prosperi, Alex Province, Mark Raymond. Right now, I thought it would be fun for all of us to talk about sharing a special wine with other people. You know, we we share wines with other people all Mm -hmm. the time. Everything we do, we share with other people. And it's really kind of a fun, traditions can get started. But I received an email from our senior contributor, Mark Raymond, who'd had this amazing experience having burgers with somebody who brought out the most amazing wine. And I looked at it and I thought, isn't that something, that somebody would share something that special with you? And I remembered all the people who shared with me, too, and it made me, it's infectious. I wanted to share special things that I have with all of you and lots and lots of other people. Mark, tell us about that. Mary and I and the family were visiting two very dear friends of ours, Dave and Lisa Werzer, and they have a little uh, house on Rogers Lake down in Lyme, Old Lyme. You know, I always bring wine with me. So I had a couple bottles of rosé in the bag because it's a warm time of year and we're going to have a good time on on the lake. And, uh, you know, we fire up the grill. We're cooking some burgers and some hot dogs. We've got the potato salad. And Dave looks over at me. He says, you know, it's not too often we get together and do these type of things. So I want to open up a really nice bottle of wine. And I said, sure, yeah, whatever you want, Dave. not thinking... He would open up this 1998 bottle of Lafitte Rothschild, and it was just absolutely spectacular. It's an amazing wine. You You were doing burgers. We were having cheeseburgers, cheeseburgers, some with bacon, some without. You know, potato (gasps) salad, coleslaw. I mean, it was. It wasn't really about the meal. It was about sharing a really special wine with some great friends. And it was so funny because my my 15 year old daughter looks over at me and she says, "Dad." this is a really unique wine. Can I taste a little? I said, sure, you can taste it. And she did. And she's like, do you get to drink wines like this all the time? I said, no, (laughs) no, no, honey. This is a rarity. And, you know, special wines like this, um, you know, (laughs) to share with special friends that actually appreciate great wine. So before we get to what your daughter thought, what was it like? Well, I mean, it was really interesting that the fruit was still there, but the the velvetiness and the length that it would stay on the palate was just absolutely incredible. I just remember sitting there, and you always refer to the echo and how it just kind of just stays throat. on your palate for a long period of time. It's almost like your throat is echoing. Yeah, and so I sip mm. at it. This was definitely a sipper. This was not a gulper. <laughs> so I tell you, I don't think... At any point in time, my nose came out of the glass because I just love (gasps) smelling wines like this. And it had this great sort of earthiness to it. It was just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, 1998. Oh, so a year after one of the great vintages of all time. Yeah. Right? It's 97. So this is the idea of sharing with people a special wine. I feel like it's divided into two categories, and I want to get to that. To come back to Mark, though, for a second, your daughter. In Europe and the rest of the world, there is a tradition with children to bring them up, introducing them to wine. And so I see that you did that with your 15-year-old daughter. And I have a theory myself, Mm -hmm. I could be wrong, that if we did that, Kids, when they got to college, wouldn't be so cuckoo about... Crazy drinking, about, yeah. You know, yeah. I have to drink to get drunk because I've never had this before. And right. if they got to appreciate what wine means, right. that it would be a whole other story. I don't know how yeah, you think about it. Yeah, you almost get a maturity level about you with drinking that. You say, I don't need to... I know what it's like. And we're talking about a sip here, too. Mm-hmm. So it was more about the appreciation for something that's so rare and so special to taste because bottles like this just they're not everywhere and you don't drink them all the time 
the the conversation grew into, Dad, what's the most expensive wine you've ever tried? And well, what does that mean? Yeah. And I said, well, I think it would probably have to have been the 1918 bottle of Paul Roger at the winery, which was just absolutely <laughs> stunning. Wow. You're killing me now. And so I, I, and I had no idea. I had no idea price point. So I looked it up. This comes to you've got a special bottle of wine, whether it's been given to you or you've bought it. And you're not going to pour that. Well, I guess I was going to say you're not going to pour that for for folks who don't know or don't appreciate. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you're going to say to, like, your daughter is an example of, you know, honey, here's something very, very special, and let's talk about it. Yeah. It provokes know, what, conversation. What it provokes thought. It's There's special wines in that my school of thought is always offering to – you want them to try it. You want them to kind of get an idea of what an aged wine does because in the European world, that's something that they've kind of grown up on and appreciate and people put wines away in their cellar where here in the United States, I think we tend to drink things a little bit on the younger side and just kind of focus on the here and now. So when you get things like that, it's really a rare occasion and there is just amazing little nuances in wines like mm. this mm. that when you get these wines on your palate, I mean, Alex, you've experienced this. All I'm thinking is there are so many beautiful bottles that people were given to people that are in people's basements that they're saving for a special occasion, bottles that were given to them at weddings or whatever that need to be drunk. Life is short, so yeah. go home this weekend and whatever. Find and one have, of those. Grab one of those bottles and go to the beach. I mean, just enjoy. It doesn't, being alive is special. Absolutely. <laughs> I just feel like Agreed. we need to go drink those bottles. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even have to be fancy, but if it's sentimental, now is now. Is now. Exactly. Now's the time. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, I get to that problem now where I have an old cellar, but I started collecting wine in my 20s. Really? Yeah, and now I have too much. I don't know what to do with it Aww. all, so I guess I should start breaking them out because let's I have... Let's go on vacation. Yeah, let's go on together. vacation. Because <laughs> let's what go to you, Chris's I mean, house. what do you do Now with I'm it? marrying you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> And you guys will remember yeah. having that bottle forever, right? I mean, yeah. you have these special occasions. And oh, we'll talk about that forever because we sat around that table and we mm-hmm. just talked about that wine. And mm. uh, we just absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. It was just fantastic. Well, I've had this kind of occasion where I'm bringing out something special. I think, Alex, you and I had once had a debate about whether you bring out a special wine for people who know nothing Mm -hmm. about wine because it's a gift to them, a Mm -hmm. kind of gift of love. And I was saying, I was on the side, that was you, beautiful, gorgeous you, and I was on the side of, you know what? I can't bring out the most special wine for members of my family who know nothing about wine because they're they're Mm -hmm. drinking it like, (laughs) like, I don't know what. And so they don't get it. Mm. And so I was trying to understand how to do this. And so Alex said to me, it was about love Mm -hmm. and education. So we went back and forth, back and forth. My parents had their uh, 80th birthday party. We had people from all over. Congratulations. Yeah, I know. They're They're nonstop. But we had this big party at my restaurant and... The question from my staff came up to me is like, what are we serving for wine? Because we were going to do like these platters of food to make it more family style, to make it more fun instead of doing courses. So we did big plates of stuff and passed it around. And we're like, well, what do we do about wine? We don't want wine to intrude, but we want to do something special. So when I was younger, I collected large format bottles. So oh, those are the best. The yeah, large yeah. format means big. three liter, six liter. Yeah. Five like, liters. Yeah, big Can you bottles. describe that for people who don't know what Well, if it was is? on the floor, it would come up about what do you think your chest three feet (laughs) four feet yeah i mean these are big bottles of wine depending on how tall you are yeah and they age a lot longer right well not i don't know about better but they they age longer right you can keep them longer so i had a i have a good amount of older california big bottles and (laughs) 
I took a, I think it was a Camus 1990 special selection and a six liter. And we decided no. to Good just one. do the whole bottle. Oh, dump the bottle. Yeah, so we dumped the bottle oh, God, into uh, pitchers. Yeah. <laughs> All right. right. Because we were like, we didn't want to make it fancy because we had people that know wine. And I also had people at this dinner that didn't know wine. So I didn't want to make it intimidating. So we put it in glass pitchers. And we didn't, <laughs> except for the people that knew wine, <laughs> we didn't make a funny thing about it. We left it in the corner. We never put, we never put the big bottle near the table or even talked about it at the yeah. table. And what I realized is that even people that didn't know wine were really were enjoying just having it in the glass mm. and mm. but not it being the center, right? It was just it was still part of the meal. And what I'm did sure your there's parents still, say they loved it. Did they? Yeah, of course. Because yeah, they know they, wine. Good but they wine. love European mm-hmm. wine, yep. so did they like this? Yeah, but my parents have been here long enough now where they love American mm-hmm. wines. And and now I was at my parents' house, they drink Spanish wines, they drink Italian wines. It mm-hmm. used to be just French. Now it's everything. Sure, they love the camaraderie, mm-hmm. though. Global. Yeah, oh yeah, and it was the wine brought everyone right around oh, the table. Chris, but I didn't want to make the so wine wonderful. be like, oh, let's talk about the wine. But I wanted to, yeah, I wanted the wine to be like what you said about the love. And that's right. what it was. And did it go, it went with everything, right? You know what? I don't think it even matter does it no it's good wine you have good food maybe it wasn't perfect with every single course but yeah pff, who cares <laughs> it's good exactly it's good it's mm-hmm. enjoy- you you're and with i family. share that yeah, yeah you're Whatever. with family you're with friends and and we had so much so many different platters of food that i'm sure it went with some of it and maybe not as well with others but who cares so what about <laughs> this thing up. where you have people who know wine mm-hmm. and then you have people who don't know wine at all And do you bring out, I mean, this is really a a real question. Do you bring out your special, special wine and talk with them about it and help them to understand it? Or do you save it for people who know wine, who are going to appreciate this with you because you both have a certain level of, what, what do you all think? Well, I Take think uh, you hope yeah. you have enough wine in your cellar where you can do both. Yeah. <laughs> but, if, <laughs> but if you don't, I no, would go I back. No, I don't. <laughs> if you don't, I would go back to what Alex said. It's really about the people that you love to be with. Mm-hmm. And if you love to be with those people, you can have a conversation. You can have an honest conversation about wine. Whether they understand it or not, they're going to ask you questions about it. Or they're not, and you're just going to enjoy being with them and enjoying the wine. All right, so here's the thing. Let's think for a second. There's a big crowd of people. Like in my family, there's a good-sized crowd of people. So everybody's going to get a tiny, tiny portion of this thing. Or you're going to have a smaller group of the people who are into wine, and they're going to get a larger portion of this and be able to really, truly appreciate the art of what this is in the bottle. What, how do you handle that? Because for me, I only have a bottle of these special wines. I'm, I, maybe I'm not like some of the rest of you who have multiple bottles of these special wines. You, you might buy the half case, the, the whole case. I don't have that. I have a bottle of this special wine. And, you know, some of the family members will drink absolutely anything. Right. Or they don't drink at all. And then there are some people who love wine, as I do, and they, w- they will really get this experience. I think, I think when you go to one bottle, if you're talking just about a 750 bottle of wine, you need to have a more intimate audience there. Mm-hmm. It's got to be a smaller group. If you've got multiple bottles or six liter or, or yeah, a large <laughs> format, then you can obviously be a little no, bit more no, liberal. We're doing that now. <laughs> no, we're not having but, large format but, bottles. But let's, let me let me just say about wine too that I look at the wine I have and it doesn't have the financial value of what Mark said of the wine he had, even though I have some of that wine. Because I didn't buy it, and this is the cool thing about wine. Remember, I said I started in my twenties. I'm getting old. So when I bought that wine, it wasn't that expensive because when you buy wines at release, they're cheaper. So everyone can do what Wait, this buy that? just buy a twenty dollar no. bottle of wine and and have the discipline to put no. it away for a well, while. All right, <laughs> if that's Listen, if that we have about a minute into. left. I just want to say this one thing: the the great artist Jackson Pollock and all these you know people who were all in this art world. They had nothing. They had no place to live. They had no money, enough to get a glass of wine or a couple drinks in a bar in New York. They had nothing. Here's what they did. 
when people came over, a pot of spaghetti on the stove, yeah. throw a baguette on yep. the table yep. with some butter, yep. and just some kind of what we would all, you know, old school call gut wine. Mm-hmm. You know, big jugs of wine poured around. Did anybody care? At the no, end of the day, it's here. a bottle of wine. It's That's like, it. just be together, talk about great That's stuff it. together, right. have that a good know. time. What's the most That's important what thing? Enjoy what you have. Never mind all this fancy schmancy business about it. dinner parties. Yep. You know, Agreed. it's like, just have, just gather people and have a great time. That's what it's all about. There yeah. you go. Indeed. We are on WNPR Thursdays at 3 and Saturdays at noon. Weekdays, listen for my 60-second food schmoozes and never eat more than you can lift. In New Haven, I'm Faith Middleton. Thanks for listening to the podcast on your schedule. And when you need a little party in your life, we're here and online all the time at foodschmooze.org. And of course, also on Facebook at Faith Middleton Food Schmooze. See you there.